Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Litao, the latest cameo I've put together this time for a customer based on some design work we did together last year. Uh, my design commission service is a process where I work with, with you, my customer, um, through a sort of series of questions and we, we kind of go backwards and forwards around some of uh, the usual sort of stuff around space constraints and things like that. Um, but the heart of the process really is trying to get into and understand what's inspiring and motivating uh, motivating you um, and what you're trying to channel, what story you're telling um, uh, in, the, in the project and, and how do we tease that out. Uh, and if the process is successful, which uh, thank goodness it always has been, we end up with, uh, with a, a layout with real character and it's a mix of, you know, I suppose my hand uh, the artistry from that, uh, but telling someone else's story. Um, I think the most successful of these are where I feel some connection as well, um, which is quite often when you see anything overgrown, um, weed strewn, um, bullet track, you know, you, you're talking my, my sort of language uh, from my own childhood experiences down at Bristol Docks and seeing the Western Fuel Co. Uh, shunter not, uh, knocking around down there. Um, so Silvertown, and um, Lee Bridge were the inspiration. And it was actually um, Paul Shannon's book, uh, which first introduced, well, I've probably seen it before actually, but there's a photo in here of the Silvertown tramway uh, at the end of days, you know, uh, late eighties, um, while Speedlink was still operating. I think there was one customer down on the Silvertown tramway still taking or uh, providing scrap, scrap metal. So it was quite an interesting uh, prototype when you look at photos, especially by that stage, you know, that area of Docklands was being uh, redeveloped or was about to be redeveloped. And the suburban passenger service was really run down. Um, there was still trip freight, uh, as I say, speed link trip freight. Uh, but, you know, the infrastructure had seen better days. Similarly, uh, the character of Lee Bridge with um, with a sort of modernised station uh, sat on top of the, uh, the road bridge with um, steps down to the platform either side. There's, there's an element of that character in, in the station on this. And so we wanted to create a non-electrified version, I suppose, of, of Silvertown, um, reimagined to tell the story uh, that my, my customer had had in mind. And, you know, I love what we've created. Uh, I really, really love it. And as you saw when in the opening, you know, I, I just get totally lost, lost in the scene. So what we'll do today, usual sort of format, uh, I'll, I'll give you a bit of an overview of the whole thing, talk about some of the processes we've used, um, pick out a few of the highlights for myself and uh, soak up some of that atmosphere. Uh, and if you've got any questions and things like that, then, uh, then as I say, I'll say to, probably say it again at the end, uh, do leave them and I'll, I'll do my best to get back to you. So uh, I'm going to move the camera a bit closer, get these books out of the way um, and, uh, and let's dive in. So presented in my usual cameo box format, uh, just over 1.2 metres long, uh, just over 30 centimetres deep. It is designed to sit on a shelf in my customer's uh, workshop study. Um, this is this is all of it. This is the scenic scene. And off to uh, the left, there is a fiddlestick extension, which I will talk about separately because I think that's quite interesting uh, to touch on and expand on the operation of the layout. Um, but yeah, this is this is the scene, and I hope you can tell from that back scene that we're in the Docklands. Um, this was taken from some uh, photos I found online from a website specialising in um, selling locations for films uh, and TV, and so some very evocative, moody sort of shots of the Docklands down there. And uh, what I've done is I've altered them slightly, but because the buildings were all in the distance, I've been lucky enough to. Uh, to be working with verticals that are vertical and horizontals that are horizontal. So I've not really had to do too much editing apart from sort of hue and saturation to get it to work. And I think it really sets the tone of a sort of post-industrial, uh, slightly rundown location. Um, when we dive in, you'll see that in a bit more detail. Uh, the shadow gap along the bottom of the layout here, I always think is important with these layouts. So although it's a very simple box and the track is laid on the base of the layout, actually there's an extra piece of wood that sits underneath just tucked back from the front and that gives that shadow gap whilst it's sitting on a, on a table or on a shelf. 
you can see the uh, the turnout controls are just manual. Um, because this is a DCC layout, as we'll see shortly, uh, their their frogs are wired up to frog juices uh, for electrical continuity. But but it's a very basic and straightforward wiring scheme um, uh, and trap plan, I suppose. Taking a look from the operational end, you can see we've got the usual 12 volt uh, power supply for the LED lights that's self-contained in the lid. The lid does lift off and um, the DCC controls are here. So we've just got an NCE power cab panel. You can see I've modified it so that the power supply for that uh, can be plugged in from the front. That's so we don't need to get into the back of the layout. And all the wiring for this actually sits uh, right on this back edge of this front um, wing if you like so you can't see it when you're looking into the layout from most angles and you'll notice there's just one little power socket down here that takes that piggybacks the power onto the uh, the fiddle stick fiddle yard so we'll have a look at that shortly afterwards as well and you can see basically we've got uh, just three tracks exit here and what you've got on stage is uh, a platform line at the back and then um, you enter from from this far side. That's the branch line, the main line, if you like. Um, and then you can pull forwards into the old tramway, uh, which is curtailed at this point. So this is like a stub end of it. And then you sort of propel back into, you know, supposed industries that are off to to our to our left here um, with. And that's effectively you got a, effectively a run around loop. So let's go and have actually let's go and have a look now at the uh, the fiddle stick. And that will explain some of uh, some of that operation. So excuse uh, some of the some of the mess. I'm uh, this is down in uh, the the sort of extension space of the workshop, which used to be the garage. Uh, so you know, there's all sorts down here, including my dad's old uh, trunk uh, that he emigrated to Canada with all those years ago. Um, she's painted up with GWR logos on for some unknown reason. Anyway, uh, this is the the fiddle stick extension. This is the layout end here. You can see there's a tongue that slots underneath uh, and aligns the layout. Uh, with the three exits and we've got the piggyback lead that brings the power onto the board. Uh, at the back here, the uh, main line um, has two tracks and this slides um, across so we can just slide backwards and forwards and that gives us the ability to run perhaps a passenger DMU in one track and the freight train in the other track. Um, and this is pivoted down the, the far end here. So that gives us a two car DMU or, you know, a, a reasonable size bogey locomotive and a couple of wagons. Okay. Um, and then obviously that's run onto the layout in whatever way you're running, but this is the extension then of that loop at the front. Um, and so the two tracks come down and then we've just got a, uh, a single locomotive sized sector that allows us to run round. So the idea is, of course, that if you've um, brought in a good strain, uh, perhaps with a brake van for the propelling move, you've got to bring that all the way into the head shunt down the far end and then bring it back into uh into this area, you know, you're propelling back into here. And then um, before you leave, you know, obviously you then come back into the layout scene and then you've got to run around, haven't you? So, because you've got to get the, uh, you've got to leave onto the, the back tracks there. So you come back around, pick up the brake van, take that back down and then propel the whole train back onto the brake van, push the whole thing back out onto the, uh, onto, well, I suppose the head shunt and then um, out and exit onto the main. So it gives a little bit of operation. Obviously this amount of staging allows you to tinker in the fiddle yard. So perhaps you could add loads if you've got empties and loads going on here at the front. Um, so although it's a very straightforward and, uh, and simple layout, operation is built in by carefully considering the design of the, the fiddle stick. So we haven't just got a straightforward track off here. We have got the ability to do a bit more. And rather than just a cassette table that slides backwards and forwards, we've built in some sort of operational uh, controllability here as well. So let's now in turn take a look at where the trains enter the layout. So um, the arrival is from underneath the uh, underneath that station um, into either the platform or forwards into the remains of the tramway. And we've got a uh, the Wills Vary Gerda um, road bridge on some cast iron supports with um, a, a sort of ex a modern prefab uh, station building, non-script station building uh, and 
uh, access then onto the platform at this end. And you won't believe that's the old, but it's actually now marketed under the Gage Master brand. Um, I've no idea what the original make was, but I remember having one that my dad had painted up in Great Western livery all those years ago. Uh, so it's, it's the Great Western footbridge. I've um, layered over styrene and I did some glazing and that glazing's just um, then marked up with, um, I think it was a uh, paint pen in this case. Sometimes I do use a bow pen, but I think that was just a Posca paint pen um, with uh, with a metal rule, uh, which you know sets the tone of sort of 60s, 70s, perhaps from the rundown nature of that building, it's we're looking at 70s. Um, and then it's probably pretty un unlikely, but it sets the scene. So we've got elements in here um, with this, this footpath along the side of the railway, with the um, the chain link fence, um, we've got some slightly upgraded permanent way. We've got the concrete track at the back, contrast it with flat bottom track, contrasting to the pool head, uh, wooden sleepers at the front. We've got you know this is all quite overgrown, but the the track at the front especially so. We, you know we've got litter um, strewn around in places as well, uh, piles of old sleepers and things. When you're down at eye level, this layout's designed to be viewed at eye level. When you're down at eye level, it's a beautiful effect looking through that's layered static grass. And we'll, we will have a look at that in a second. So just panning around slightly so you can get a feel for the, uh, for the scene. We then move into a single platform that's long enough for two or three cars. And we've got the head shunt at the front. Um, and what you've got then at the front edge here is this road. Uh, again, if you look at photos of the area, uh, the, the tramway was sandwiched between two roads. So I've tried to sort of incorporate that feel. Um, so we've got the, the road perhaps curving off towards, you know, the frontier. We've got a gateway in, um, some more tarmac and then some sleepers here strewn to stop people driving off down this way. And some pallets and a, and a brazier of all things down here. So taking a look at the back of the layout, I think in urban scenes like this, we're really lucky because we've got the ability to mix lots of different textures uh, in into one fairly compact setting. You know, we've got a concrete panel fence along the back left, corrugated metal sort of infill here, and then a brick wall, and then concrete um, edging on the uh, on the platform. Plus, we've got the juxtaposition of the chain link fence here, mixed in with weeds, litter, and whatnot, and it and it takes on that character really quickly of a sort of rundown. Uh, setting and I think the mixture of the materials and the lack of sort of investment uh, in in the scene do paint the the period we're talking about here, which was intended to be sort of mid seventies to early eighties, depending on the stock that uh, my customer wanted to run on the layout. So another couple of uh, things to note: these um, station lamps are just scratch built. That's a styrene tube at the bottom with, and I think it's a zero point nine mil brass. Uh, I didn't have any one mil in stock, so a 0.9 mil brass uh, rod bent through 90 degrees at the top and a little styrene head stuck on. What you will notice there though is those Lee Town station signs. Um, I think sometimes these little touches add real character. So it's the British Rail font, so you know it, it sets the period um, for, for what we're talking about here. Um, but is um, pre sectorization so we don't have any sort of network southeast branding on there or anything like that. Um, you'll also note just down here at the very front um, is a point lever, manual point lever for the for the tramway. And although you can buy those, that's just a piece of 0 0.6 mil brass wire bent up into shape and drilled into a little hole. So if it gets knocked, it can be uh, be easily replaced. Um, the only danger with them is they are fairly sharp, so if you forget they're there, <laughs> when you're cleaning the track, you can get a bit of a stab in the finger. Taking a look at the scene along the front of the layout, the road is actually mounting card, and um, the stuff sold for framing photos. So there's a layer here and then a layer for the pavement, and that's painted with gloss, um, humbral gloss enamel in various shades, dark greys and blacks, and then dusted with talcum powder um, left to dry and then vacuumed and cleaned up with a brush and it gives a really lovely texture and a variation which would be difficult to achieve any other way and um, that's backed by um, I think it's the Pico or it might be Ratio uh, spear point fencing which looks suitably sort of urban in this setting and that's just been toned down with some humble 98 and we've got the uh, the Ratio street lamps which 
perhaps a little under detail, but they, they feel like the sort of prototype. Um, and we know what they, they should look like. Um, and of course the head isn't quite right, but I think they, they set the scene for this urban setting quite nicely. And to finish the scene off down here, we've got some uh, pallets, 3D printed pallets and a brazier uh, from, I think it was Bunter's Yard, uh, which is a, an online supplier. Um, they're really nicely put together and painted. So I was really pleased with those, uh, finished off this edge nicely. What you can see also in this shot is this contrast in track finish as well. I know you'll see it in all the shots, but I'm going to talk about it now. So we've got the concrete track at the back. and um, That's been weathered. It's all been weathered, but that's been weathered perhaps slightly less than this. We, here we've got hand-painted sleepers of different tones, greys and browns, usually a mixture of um, Humbrol 98, Humbrol 64 and a bit of 33 to vary the tone. So I think that, that stage of um, the layout build you know, we quite often want to rush through to get to the excitement of adding the scenery. But if we, we skip that, then we miss the opportunity for such tonal variation, such depth in the finish. So I'd encourage you all to, to take your time with painting the sleepers, to take your time with getting the ballasting right, because these things need to be neat and they need to be well observed and they form then the foundation for all the work that follows. Uh, what you've got then is some, uh, this is fine grey ballast from Woodland Scenics and it's surrounded by fine cinders either side and then we've got a variety of static grasses from the Pico Scene range and 2mm and 4mm lengths here and then the odd location where I've added in some 6 and what I'll do in a minute is I will take a look sort of through the grass this way and you can see the effect a bit better. So as we take this look across the layout as promised you can see the effectiveness of the static grass from this position. We've got a variety of lengths, but all the shades are toned down. Uh, they're dead or wintry colours, um, which certainly suits the sort of time of year that we're trying to portray. And also the mood and the feeling of, of the sort of uh, worn out, um, run down 70s uh, vibe. You'll note that actually between the rails, the grass is actually quite short um, and it's the longer stuff um, around the detailing up. And I use a Pico scene applicator a static applicator and I use actually the detailing one, the smallest one they do um, and it means you're always refilling it and that is a great thing because it means you're varying the shades as you go and you're never, never doing more than a sort of postage stamp area in one go. Um, so you know you're applying some PVA glue or some scenic cement depending on which sort of stage we're at and then we are um, applying the static grass straight to that area and then moving on, moving on and then when we come back to detail it I use a, a lacquer spray, a matte lacquer, and I cut some holes in pieces of paper to act as a template so that, you know, you're controlling where that lacquer goes. And then you're building that layering up with, with some more of the same uh, lengths, but also we can use some longer lengths now. We can add in some four mil and perhaps even some six mil straw, um, which gives a bit more volume. you know note here my, uh, my trademark um, brambles. I'm not really sure how much brambles we'd see in, in this part of uh, the Docklands, but um, it's on all my layouts. I think it looks really nice as well. I do uh, do like the process of building it up. Um, you know, no credit for the, the technique. It's lifted straight out of Gordon Gravitt's book. It's postiche layered with uh, matte lacquer and um, some green scenes scatter uh, to add some colour to it. So... Let's end this uh, the, end the tour of the layout, if you like, at this end, uh, the end of the track. And you'll notice both are terminated with Pico Bullhead um, buffer stops, which actually do work on the uh, the Code 75 flat bottom rail as well. Uh, I think they're a much nicer product than the uh, the ones in the, the flat bottom range. So uh, that's a top tip for you there. The ratio concrete footbridge. Uh, probably a little bit cliched in its position here and obviously will be a bit dangerous the distance between the platform edge and the concrete footbridge but when viewed at eye level those sort of horizontal distances disappear and we don't notice them um, may, uh, an artist's decision really this end it's like we're trying to frame the layout and avoid uh, wondering how you know uh, how things end here. Uh, any taller structure would probably have overpowered the scene. So I thought a footbridge would work quite nicely and I've set it back from the edge. It hasn't caught, cast any awkward shadows, which is really nicely, but setting it back from the uh, back scene allows a sort of full picture on there. And that's actually the Tate and Lyle um, sugar 
plant that's down uh, in the Docklands, really, in London. And I think it's probably a more modern photo, but I've knocked back the saturation, taken some of the branding off. Uh, I think it sort of lends a really nice feel to this end. You'll note a, a smattering of litter. I think any layout set in the 70s period needs to, to feature some of this. In fact, probably even today. And whilst there's people out there who would say, oh, James, you could add some touches of colour. You could add some Coke cans. You could add some crisp packets and things. My eye would be distracted by that. And so as an artist, I make the decision that my litter is bland and boring and plain and lets the locomotives and rolling stock stay the lead actors. The whole stage set is deliberately toned down. We've used subdued colours. There's no bright greens, no bright, uh, bright anything really. Um, we're allowing our models, our model trains to, uh, to, to really sing here. And so um, I, I, I think this beige off-white litter works nicely. We, our, our brain reads it as, you know, wind, wind-strewn paper or newspaper or things that have been dropped onto the rails. And uh, it is literally pieces of slightly waxed wrapping paper that you get, you know, in packing in, in nice products, cut up into various small random sizes, um, gently bent and folded, and then uh, secured in place with um, the same sort of scenic cement that I use for securing everything else. It's from Woodland Scenics. Um, and, uh, you know, it's my go-to product because it just works. I don't have to worry about mixing something up and, and it not, uh, not doing the job. So there we are, a bit of a tour of the of the project. I do apologise for not being able to get locomotives moving on uh, on today's video. Uh, it, it is a shame. I would love to be able to uh, to help us get really lost in the uh, in the atmosphere uh, with a moving uh, with a moving image as well. But I do hope the overview and some of those uh, evocative stills have uh, wet your appetite for more. And I will be doing a bit of a, a catalogue of finished photos and they'll go on the blog. So uh, I think I've said before on these videos, the blog is updated daily with um, of my own work plus commissions of various natures, scales, prototypes, you know, there's all sorts on there. I've got quite an eclectic taste anyway. Uh, and I love working on your, your own models of whatever things you're interested in. So um, I think all that remains to be said is thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions or thoughts or reflections, and do uh, do leave them, I'll try do my best to uh, to get back to you and answer them. And uh, if you haven't done already, do uh, do like and subscribe, and uh, and tell all your friends too, please. And uh, until next time, we'll see you again soon.